Um, right, I would just like to um, tell you how we set up the Nagios monitoring system at Strathclyde to monitor our Moodle uh, infrastructure and uh, application. Um, we've been running Moodle for five or six years now, and it's um, we've had really good uptime. It's really quite a, a stable system, but we still have occasional um, problems, and we want to know when they're going to happen and, and what has happened. So, um, so to do that, we, we use this um, software Nagios. It's, um, we use a free, a free open source version of it called Core DIY. Um, Nagios has been around since 1999, so it's incredibly stable and mature, um, and it looks like 1999, but that's another question. Um, it enables monitoring of pretty much anything that you know uh, you may want to to monitor in, in an IT system, like network protocols, system resources, CPU, RAM. Um, if you've got data centers that have got things like probes or temperature sensors in them or anything, it can monitor all that stuff. So it's, it's actually a really good uh, system for um, for monitoring sort of the whole thing, if you like. Um, and it, it does that by, um, it runs on a, a server um, and monitors all the other servers and provides this kind of web front end for it. Um, which I'll show you later on. Um, so the, the actual checks um, are, are done using plugins um, rather than being built into the software. So um, there's a bit, like Moodle, there's about 50 core plugins that are actually um, shipped with the software. They'll check all sorts of things. And there's about 4,000 uh, community created ones. So uh, it can check almost anything. It's fantastic for that. Um, so here's some, um, the, some examples just of the kind of thing that the plugins might uh, return to you to um, tell you, for example, that your server's up and it's responding quickly, or um, SendMail isn't waiting to send any messages, which is a problem we've had um, with our Moodle servers before, um, or like your Apache service is up. Um, so um, some of these things like ping, uh, there's a and a public interface, but for things where there isn't a public interface, where maybe a, a service is sitting behind uh, a firewall or something like that, we use this Nagios um, remote plugin execution um, plugin, essentially, which just runs on the server to be monitored and securely passes the check data back to your Nagios server. So there's no there's no need for um, sort of uh, security problems in your, your firewall or anything like that. Um, so basically you just you set up all the machines that you're monitoring, be it um, servers or bits of you know, IT hardware or whatever, um, their hosts and you set up services which are things to be monitored within that host and Nagios will give you these um, sort of quite useful but not very pretty overview diagrams. So the one on the top left is the very, very high level. It just shows you your system is kind of okay. The one on the bottom will show you each host and um, you know, the, the status of it. And the one at the top was um, every service, the status um, of them individually. The reason it's, it's really good for monitoring a, a Moodle service is because um, there, there are plugins for like all the, the kind of the bits that you would normally have in a Moodle um, set up, like, you know, MySQL, uh, Postgres, and all the Memcached and the, the various different servers. And it's also, um, fairly easy to write your own plugins because it is just a shell script. My colleague Michael, I'm not sure if he's here, um, wrote a plugin in about an hour, I think it was, to, to monitor end-to-end -end the shibboleth login process um, using the BHUT testing framework, actually. Um, and that, um, that was like a really quick development, but um, it was really useful. So, um, so I, I guess... Uh, that's about infrastructure monitoring, but we also wanted to monitor things within Moodle, the application, you know, things like um, has the event queue become too big or, or has the cron job not run for, for long enough? So what we did was we, we developed this um, plugin, Local Nagios, which um, I think University of Kent also developed something similar, but um, it allows, it, it provides one single Nagios plugin, Check Moodle it's called, um, and it will communicate with this plugin to, to do any old, uh, any check that you want it to do and pass the, the results back to Nagios. Um, an example of where we've used this is like the, the events queue, which um, we have a third party plugin that makes heavy use of that and it quite often gets blocked and it's a real nightmare to, um, to troubleshoot. Um, so we can now just monitor that and we say if the events queue gets beyond, you know, 100 events or something, like, let us know. Um, scheduled tasks are another thing that are quite useful to monitor if you've got something that's like a really important scheduled task and you expect it to run regularly, you can, um, you can get Nagios to let you know if it's um, 
is maybe not run for an hour or something when you're expecting it to run every five minutes. Um, so instead of uh, hard coding these checks into the, um, the plugin that we wrote, we wrote a kind of a mini framework um, which allows uh, any of the plugins we write to kind of expose uh, anything as a service that can be monitored by by Nagios, so you, you can then plug them straight into the application. Um, some successes we've had uh, with this approach, um, a couple of times we've been able to um, basically notice that Shibboleth is down and get it fixed before anybody complained, which is useful. Um, that's also an interesting one because we're monitoring somebody else's service, it's not actually ours, but we have to get it done. Um, the events queue, we've, we've now got it so that it, um, that we have a threshold set, so if it gets beyond a certain level, it will warn us that um, you know the events queue isn't working. So we no, no longer have to um, to notice that it's, it's broken. Um, we can actually fix it really, really quickly now. So, um, and what do you need to run now? Basically, um, you just need an old PC or a, an old server. It, it's still kind of 1999 technology, so it's all shell scripts, and, and you don't need anything particularly. Um, Major probably wouldn't run an Apple too, but um, the, the other thing you need is uh, a bit of Linux know-how, but actually probably not that much. You just need to be able to write, be able to write a shell script, and that's uh, really about all. It's got quite a, a high uh, or a steep learning curve, but it's also very, very sort of simple at heart. So the, the theory of it is quite, you know, you always you're always well oriented uh, because you know how it works. So. Um, so that was a, yeah, a quick overview of how we use Nagios to um, monitor the application. <laughs>